Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Puzzle. Today, we're going to talk for the second time about the Isis Orb Puzzle, the self-proclaimed world's most challenging puzzle. And I can tell you already, it is pretty challenging, and I give it my highest difficulty rating of 5 out of a maximum of 5. It is very, very difficult, but there are it's coming also with some clues and these clues you get after you register your puzzle on the website and there are overall 10 of them and they are encrypted and this encryption is pretty easy to solve so it's just a simple encryption that replaces a letter by another letter you can encrypt it easily by hand or you can also use it a website for a nearly fully automated encryption the puzzle itself has a pretty interesting mechanism and solution inside Unfortunately, or luckily, I found a different solution which nearly bypasses this complete mechanism and uh, enabled me to solve it maybe in within one hour. But I can guess that if you need to find the real solution for this um, puzzle, it will be much, much more difficult and take you much longer. And without these clues, I would consider this puzzle to be impossible. Today will be a I expect a long episode, so be prepared for that. I will show you two different solutions, the original intended solution and also my personal solution. And if you like watching videos about puzzles and enjoy my explanations about the mechanisms behind, I recommend you to check out Brilliant.org who sponsored today's episode. Brilliant.org is a problem-solving website that teaches you how to think like a mathematician or a scientist. They offer you a huge amount of courses in the field of math, science, and computer science. For example, considering today's puzzle, the Isis Orb, you can learn and understand classical mechanics. And if you provide a wrong answer, don't worry, that's part of making progress. You can check out the solution for each single exercise and improve your skills. So unlike listening and copying in a boring school lesson, Brilliant provides you a very efficient way of learning through actively engaging with problems to train your analytical and critical thinking skills. To support Mr. Puzzle, and learn more about Brilliant, use the link in the video description and go to brilliant.org slash mrpuzzle and sign up for free. And also, the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for supporting my channel. And now, let's continue with the Isis or puzzle. I think everything is said about this puzzle, details in my previous video. And if you're interested to buy it, just check out the website from Sonic Games. I will put you the link in the description of this video. And of course, if you're intending to buy it, don't watch the solution after the spoiler break. Isis Orb, a very, very interesting looking, very cool puzzle. And what is this puzzle about? Well, it's about opening up this sphere and that makes it some kind of a trick box. Even if there's no real compartment inside, it is or can be considered to be something like a trick box to open it. As I mentioned in the introduction, there are clues to solve this puzzle that are provided to solve this puzzle. And if you know the solution, they are pretty clear. If you do not know the solution, they are pretty difficult to understand. Anyhow, one of the clues, for example, is telling you that these rings that go around here and can be twisted, that made me think in the unboxing video, this um, puzzle is something like a combination lock. They are basically completely useless. They have nothing to do with the solution. Also, my guess here about this book and about the, the um, pictures here on the box, that they have something to do with the solution. No, they have not to, to do anything with the solution. And I will show you now the intended way of the um, of Sonic Games, how to open it up. It's like a kind of a similar solution like with a lot of trick boxes. There, if you move it, you can hear there's something going on inside here and there are some ball bearings, at least two that rolling around. And one thing that is not mentioned in the clues is you need to give it a good smack. And I do, I do not mean like 
this, yeah, I mean really hard and this is probably what prevents a lot of people from solving it because this thing is pretty expensive and it's pretty cool looking and well then you need to take your puzzle and do like something like this and this was really not too much you really need to hit it that hard to make a ball that stick to a magnet inside release and drops down and now the ball is released but the problem is, and it is described in the, clue, in the clues, that you need to he be able to hear three ball bearings. But it's nearly impossible to hear the difference between two and three ball bearings. However, if the ball is dropped down, there's some kind of a maze lock inside. And you need to actually do this kind of movement. If you have the same maze inside as I do, maybe there are more existing, okay? So, you I, I usually pan it here a little bit towards me, and then I do a circle 360 degrees counterclockwise 180 degrees clockwise another 360 degrees counterclockwise and another 180 degrees clockwise and now this button that i could press in the beginning let's say nearly double them as much as i can do now is blocked pretty much on the top so i can nearly press it in and this, um, according to the clues, is already an important step you need to reach, okay? But um, what I did, uh, need to do now is, I need to press it in. You will understand later in detail why I press it in. And now I flip it upside down. And I will move the puzzle now until it remains silent and I cannot hear any more of these ball bearings here, okay? So let me just do that. So now I reached a point and you could see that it quite can take you some time. The puzzle is now completely silent and if they, if the puzzle is in this state and this state is already also mentioned in the clues, I can press the button here on the rear side, uh, on the bottom side, um, incompletely. So you hear that sound and if I can hear that sound, the puzzle is solved because I can screw, unscrew these two halves from each other. So the solution seems to be quite easy, but I will show you if you see the mechanics, the mechanism behind, you will understand that it's actually not because it's quite complicated. Okay, so how does it work? Well, this ball bearing is in the beginning located here inside of this hole over here and it sticks to a magnet, okay? So that means to release it, you need to apply some force, yeah? And the problem is, if I do it by hand, this is what I mentioned, and this is the most difficult part of this puzzle, the magnet is just too strong from my point of view. You need to really hit it hard that the ball bearing comes out, okay? This is the most difficult part. And then you have inside here, this plate, this metal plate. I will just release the cover that you can see what's going on inside there. And this is a maze lock. And this is an amazing idea from my point of view. Very, very cool. The ball will drop down out of this hole, through this hole over here, inside the maze at this position. And then I will do the movement as I described. I will go one rotation counterclockwise, half a rotation clockwise, another 360 degrees counterclockwise, and 180 degrees clockwise and then you end up here in the center position and you have this pin here that you can press down and this press inside it will make this movement and in the unopened stage this part here of the puzzle will be not down here but more like in this position so it will lock by these two parts it will be will lock it will grab these two notches here and it will prevent you from twisting it and open it up okay so you need to push it down but basically you cannot push it down because it's not able uh, not possible to push it down and also the distance of this piece is too less 
if the ball is not in position. So if the ball is not inside here, you can push it down, but it will stop immediately before it starts pushing down this plate. Only if the ball is in this position, so it will um, be like an elongation of this piece, you will be able to move to the next step. So this is a pretty cool solution from my point of view, or pretty cool part of the solution. But why, cannot, why can't I press it down? And this is another very cool feature on this puzzle, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. If I take this mace lock out, so it's loaded by, uh, by a spring that it's always pushed up and held in the locked position. And there are two ball bearings inside here, below, that can rotate. And this is the noise you can hear coming from the inside. And when these two ball bearings positioned in these two holes, and this was what I did with these strange movements, when these are catched in these two holes from below, when the puzzle is held upside down, then I will be able to push this plate in by the button and it will grab here with these two balls in a small notch here on the side and remain in the locked position and unlocked position and I can screw it open. Very cool solution. There's a lot of, let's say, thinking when <laughs> I think the, the makers of this um, put a lot of thinking inside here, but there are also some small design flaws. Yeah, And this is, for example, if you take this piece here, you will be able, if it's covered up, like this, you will be able, and this is what obviously happened to a lot of people, you are able to assemble it wrong, so in the wrong orientation. So it means you can assemble it like this, which actually it need to be to the, uh, close to this notch, the hole to this notch, that the ball can drop down here. If someone makes the mistake and assemble it like this, the ball can never drop down again into the maze and you cannot unlock it. And this is something that should not happen. You should have implemented some kind of a, usually in designing it's called pokayoki. It means you cannot switch the sides. Yeah, So you just need to make one piece here smaller and one notch smaller and that prevents you from assembling in it in the wrong way. So this is something that should not have, uh, should not happen in a um, serial pro uh, product that have been sold thousands of time. Nevertheless, and um, what can also happen is you just take the ball out here and the problem is if you do not put it back, well, if I forget it and assemble it, well, it's not possible to get it open again because the ball cannot drop down in the maze. It cannot get in this place and support this um, piece here if you push it in to push down the locking plate and open the puzzle up. So the puzzle is closed also in this kind of, um, if you make this kind of mistake, the puzzle is closed forever. Ah, in addition, I forgot to mention, there's also a key inside here. Ah, here it is. So it's just a basic key, some kind of a reward, but in the end, it has no, no function, okay? So to lock it up again, I need to do it in the following way. I will put this one in, hole close to the notch over here. A small groove. Put it in. I will put the two bolts in the holes, which can take you a moment. Okay, now it's silent. So I will push it in all the way down and Ball the bearing is inside. I will put it on top. Just screw it counterclockwise to lock it or get it into the locked position. And if it's in position, I'll give it a small smack from below that it jumps into place and the puzzle is locked again. Okay, so this was the intended solution. Now I'm gonna show you the repair solution or my personal solution and how I solved this puzzle. Well. I handled it a lot of times and I also read these clues a lot of times and there's one clue that is at the very end of the clues, I think the seventh or eighth one, and this one tells you that at the stage shortly before the puzzle is solved that um, you, you should not hear the ball bearings anymore. And when I handled the puzzle and moved it around, I also had it of course upside down. And it happened to me uh, like now. Usually you take very long to get the ball bearings in position. 
But now, it happened to me that after some seconds they are already in position and when I handle it, I notice it. Oh, what's going on here? Because it sounds like, yeah, I can hear nothing anymore and it's, it seemed to me like I'm very close to the solution. And what I did in this position, and this was the right step, I took it and give it just a smack. Because like I do with a lot of puzzle boxes, okay? And if I do it like this, the puzzle is already solved. So this is not intended, I think, by the by the makers of this puzzle. And how did it work? Well, I what I did here is I get the two ball bearings in the in the um, two holes here of this piece. So they are already in the right position. Usually this should be used to press down this locking plate, the maze plate, to unlock the puzzle. Much more difficult to get there. But I used basically inertia here to open it because I, I mean, this, this plate here has kind of a mass, okay? And if I accelerate it and stop it immediately, this will continue to travel due to inertia and it will unlock itself basically because if you if you hit it hard enough which i obviously did this thing these two ball bearings here or these two, two uh, locking bearings they will jump inside here from one notch to another notch and unlock itself so this is what what's basically happened to me and how i immediately could open this puzzle and i will show you now something interesting because if i take this ball bearing out which is still in place oh this is horrible horrible difficult or oh, horrible strong sticking here okay and if i now have this plate and i will now assemble it in the wrong direction so in this condition if i would assemble the original puzzle in this condition without the ball bearing and without the hole here in the correct position it would never open up again. I will just lock it. So it's in locked condition again. You can see it. Ball bearing is still here. And also the plate is assembled in the wrong direction. So now I will get the two bolts again in the in the right position again. And I hope that this kind of solution or trick might help all of you desperate guys who broke their puzzle because of wrong assembly. So let's just get the two ball rings in position. It is in position now. The ball rings are in position now. And now I do it the same way as before. I give it a smack. And I will be open, able to open it up. So please, if you broke your puzzle and cannot open it anymore, try this solution and let me know if this also works for you. I hope you like this episode. It's a very interesting puzzle. You have to consider if you give it to someone as a present or something, it's very, very difficult and the one should be able to, or should have some experience with puzzling. Otherwise, I think it will be impossible for them to open. I hope you liked today's episode. And if yes, just hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to stay informed about future episodes. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, of course. Until next time, keep on puzzling.